Obviously, the offense has started very slowly here. Uh, I'm wondering, what do you think about the idea that people say your offense is vanilla uh, through the first four weeks of the season? You know, I, I think the biggest thing we're all trying to do is just is just simply execute better, both in the run game and the pass game. And uh, you certainly want to uh, do the things that, that you're good at. And we're trying to discover what those things are, again, both in the run and the pass game. And uh, you, you want to make sure that you're find ways to keep the defense off balance, whether it's using tempo, which we've used a lot of this year, uh, whether it's using formations and movements, or just, um, you know, just the combination of run and pass and different ways to do that. So we're all trying to, as a coaching staff, do a great job putting our players in a good position, and then we have to execute once the ball turns over. How much of it also has to play with the fact that you didn't have the, the real, you know, usual off season in regards to what you're able to do Oh, I think everybody's in the same boat regarding that. And, uh, you know, our, our team did a great job through the offseason over Zoom trying to learn and understand, uh, you know, what we're going to try to do offensively. And then our players work very hard throughout training camp, uh, the same thing. And, and obviously, the more we do it together, uh, I think uh, the better we'll get at it. There was some progress in the game the other day. It's really the first time we ran the ball relatively consistently throughout the year. That certainly helped us gain the balance that we want. And uh, I think it helped the passing game and the protection as that game wore on. So we're certainly striving for that. Uh, and, and guys are working hard every day to achieve it. Hi, Leonard. Jason, what are your emotions this week going back to face the Dallas Cowboys and how awkward was it at the end not officially being let go when they were bringing in a new coach? Yeah, you know, the biggest thing that, that we're all focused on is, is what we can do to help the New York Giants uh, play as well as we can play. And, and that's what we're focused on as players and as coaches. Uh, you know, many people around the league, uh, you know, you have history in another place. Uh, you know people on other teams. I obviously spent a lot of time in Dallas and we're very grateful for my experience there and all the players I was fortunate to coach and the guys I was fortunate to coach with and everyone in that organization and really the people of Dallas. They, they were amazing to me. It was a great time in my life. So uh, forever appreciative of that and forever grateful of that, uh, but excited about this opportunity and trying to help this team get better. Kenneth. Hey, Jason, how you doing? Great, how you doing? Good. During your coaching career, I assume you've made trips to cities across the country. When you go to those cities, do you normally go out on a Saturday night and have a dinner with somebody? And has that changed with COVID-19? Yeah, you know, and all the teams I, I played on or, or coached with, uh, we always were, uh, you know, in the hotel on Saturday night. Um, you know, I'm sure some coaches, when you're done with your meetings, would go out before curfew. But uh, I always was a guy that just kind of stayed at the hotel and I uh, went back up to the room. So that's never really part of my routine. So nothing's really changed for me. Thank you. Ralph. Hey, Jason. Um, you know, early uh, years ago, the common wisdom was that it took a quarterback several years before he really kind of showed what he could do and what he was. Last couple of years, we've seen a lot of quarterbacks kind of develop really quickly and almost show it immediately. Um, do you think that the timeline for development of young quarterbacks is now quicker than it used to be? Oh, I think it's a long discussion. You know, I think the way uh, the salary cap is and the way rosters are structured, uh, a lot of young players are making teams now, or maybe they wouldn't have before. And, and a lot of young players at all positions are playing earlier than they would have before. And uh, it's just the nature of how salary cap works and, uh, and how rosters are structured. And that's probably been in place at least for the last 10 years and, and maybe longer than that. Uh, in regards to the quarterback position, uh, you know, that's been a great debate through the years. Uh, I don't think there's any question that the more recent trend is that, you know, if you draft a guy high, you typically want to play him early. And, uh, you know, what I would say uh, going back really uh, – throughout at least the recent history in the NFL, uh, typically uh, quarterbacks um, play best when they're in a really good environment. And, uh, and that's young quarterbacks and that's older quarterbacks. And you know, what everyone's trying to do in an organization is create a good environment for their quarterback and uh, give, a, give them a good su supporting cast. Typically, it's a strong offensive line. It's, it's playmakers outside. It's a good running game. And, uh, and I think those things help 
help that quarterback transition more smoothly. And uh, if he's in a situation where he's carrying too much of a burden early on because the team is young in their rebuilding stage, sometimes it's a little bit harder for that guy to transition. So uh, I think that's probably a common denominator for a lot of guys. And, and uh, you know, sometimes quarterbacks have to take their lumps because they're really on the ground floor of the rebuilding process. And, and, and the best ones I've been around have come out the other end of those experiences. Sometimes the transition happens smoother because the team's further along in their cycle of rebuilding and that quarterback comes into that environment and it's that much better. Zach, Zach. Hey, Jason. Um, so, so you guys, I, I believe, are in last place in terms of percentage of throws that, have, that are uh, t- more than 20 yards down the field. I'm just curious um, like, w- why you would explain that is that way, and is that something that you think needs to go up in the future, that you guys maybe take more shots down the field? With Daniel? Yeah, I don't think there's any question. You want to make explosive plays. That's a big part of playing offensive football and scoring points. Uh, I think if you look at the, the statistics on drives when you make an explosive play, versus not make an explosive play, the spread is almost 50% different. So that's an important thing. It's something we try to emphasize. Obviously, being able to run the football, being able to control the line of scrimmage, being able to pass protect the way you need to uh, impacts your ability to throw the ball vertically down the field. You know, if you take those shots and, and you're not able to hold it and, 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 and protect it the way you need to, you know, a lot of bad things happen and you find yourself digging out of those drives. So you have to be selective. Uh, again, w- when you're kind of rebuilding with a team to find those spots, uh, but there's no question they're important. They're important in drives. They're important in drives if you want to score points. We got, we got time for three more, Art Rock and Jory. Art. Hey, Jason. Uh, I know you obviously have your sights set on doing your one job this week, but I think there are probably some people in that building. Patrick Graham, Logan Ryan talked about how they want to pick your brain about the personnel that you spent a lot of time with over on the other side of the ball. Um, I'm just curious, uh, how do you handle the familiarity going into this week? Obviously, you have a lot of people in Dallas who are familiar with things that you want to do, but also you guys have familiarity in a lot of players on both sides of the ball in Dallas. Do you allow for that for your guys on staff and to kind of pick your brain a little bit? as to what they may be entertaining this weekend. Yeah, you know, I think that's part of the process every week in the NFL. You're always trying to understand who you're playing against. And so, so much of that comes from your film study and watching the guys play on tape. But a lot of it comes from, you know, your memory of a player coming out in the draft and how you got to know him, or maybe you were around that player or somebody else on the staff or the team was. So, you know, I don't think you, you, you want to get overly focused on those things. But if there's a resource in the building, you certainly want to you, you want to take advantage of it. And uh, I think my experience has been most players and coaches through the years have been generous with that knowledge. I don't think it should be overused. I think the process that we go through each week and trying to understand who the opponent is and, and what we want to do is the best process. But anytime you have a resource that you can use in the building, I think it can be helpful for everybody. Thanks, Jason. I'm Rock. Jason, what was it that got the running game going uh, a, a little bit anyway last, last week? And uh, where is Devontae Freeman? I mean, is he completely caught up in, in what you what you need from him? Yeah, you know, the, the running game, again, it was really the first time we were able to consistently run the football in the game. And, and that obviously makes everything else uh, be much better. And so you continue to persist with it uh, regardless, but, but you're more – uh, you're more likely to keep running the ball when you have some success. And we were able to do that. I think using some tempo helped us. Uh, I think we were controlling the line of scrimmage as well as we have in the running game all year long. So a lot of positive runs. I thought the guys did a good job up front blocking, you know, not just the down guys, but the tight ends. The receivers got involved, and, uh, and the runners ran the ball well. And we ran it different ways. So that certainly helped us as the game wore on. Again, it helped our protection, the run action stuff. We were able to make some plays in the passing game, I think, as a result of that. So uh, we have to continue to work hard on it in practice and carry that to the ball game. Uh, In regards to Devonta, he's done an excellent job since he's been here. He's been a very good player in this league for a number of years. and, And you can see why. He's a real professional in his approach. He loves ball. He works very hard to get himself physically, mentally, and emotionally ready to play. And he does that every day. And he's chomping the bit for more opportunities. And he's done a good job taking advantage of them. Last question here, Jory. 
Jason, two pack question. The first would be, where do you see the biggest schematic change on the Cowboys defense from last year to this year? And what's the top lesson you learned as coach here that you've taken to the Giants? Oh, in regards to the defense, it's really a, a completely different style of defense uh, f from from when we were there the last number of years. Uh, you know, Mike Nolan's the defensive coordinator now, so his whole scheme is different than what we played. Obviously, there are some familiar names, and you know they have really good pass rushers up front, and they got linebackers who can run, and guys on the back end who are good cover guys. So, uh, you know, familiar with a lot of the names, but the scheme is really very different. Um, in regards to learning uh, from my experiences in Dallas, uh, you, you know, I think the biggest thing I learned a long time ago is you have to learn from all your experiences. And uh, you know, I was fortunate to play in the league for a number of years, and I tried to learn from, from every experience I had there, whether it's from a situation or from other players or from coaches. And I tried to do the same thing as an assistant coach and as a head coach when I was in Dallas. Uh, fortunate to be around a lot of really good players, uh, proud of the team we built down there, proud of the coaches we had, and, and really learned from them each and every day. So you try to take all those experiences and grow as a person and grow as a coach and, and try to use them as you go forward.